What's going on everyone? Welcome to another Keyshot tutorial. In this video, we're gonna take a look at the all new collision detection features now available in Keyshot 10.1. Collision detection is a feature that I'm personally super excited to see introduced into Keyshot. It essentially gives you the ability to detect other objects in your scene while moving a selected item. This helps to ensure objects don't have any unwanted intersection and also reduces the need to make time consuming adjustments to prevent it. There are two components that make up Keyshot's new collision detection feature, both of which can be found in the updated move tool. The first is collision, which applies to objects that are being physically moved using the move tool. To get started using collision detection, simply select the part or parts you would like to move, then either right click your selection in the real time view and select move, or right click the highlighted part or parts in your scene tree and select move from there. At this point, the move tool will appear in your real-time view and you'll be able to find the new collision detection settings at the bottom of the advanced accordion. By enabling the collision checkbox, movements made to your object will be impeded by other objects throughout your scene. Notice that without the collision detection box checked, I can move my object freely around the scene. This allows my selection to pass through nearby objects as well as the ground plane. However, once my collision checkbox has been checked on, my object's movements are now impeded by both the surrounding geometry as well as the ground plane below. This greatly reduces the chance that your scene will have accidental or unwanted overlapping of geometry. It also makes positioning objects that should be touching quick and easy. One thing to note here about the collision checkbox is that it removes the ability to toggle the scale function from within the move tool window. If you do need to scale an object while working with collision detection, you can still do so from the position sub tab under the scene tree, or by simply unchecking the collision checkbox and making your adjustments from the move tool window. The second component to the new collision detection features is the settle button and as parts checkbox, both of which are located in the advanced tab and can be found just below the collision checkbox. These features work under the same principles as the collision checkbox. However, instead of physically manipulating your object's movements, the settle feature causes an automatic placement of your object, much like the existing snap to feature. The difference is that instead of geometry simply stopping against an object or ground plane, it falls in a more natural manner. To better illustrate the idea, think about how a pen you've dropped on a table would react. Typically, the pen might bounce before landing in some orientation, and then it would continue its movement until the momentum had settled. This is precisely how both the Settle and Settle As Parts features work in Keyshot 10.1. With that knowledge, let's take a look at Keyshot and see how that works in program. In this scene, I'm using a few models that I've pulled from the cloud library. If you haven't used the cloud library before, I highly recommend you check it out. It's a great way to find new and interesting materials, textures, and environments, as well as find 3D models to help you build out your scenes, practice renderings, or in this case, demo new features. So what I've done here is create a scene where I want to place a pen and pencils into a holder of some kind, in this case, a coffee mug. But rather than having to manually adjust each individual pen or pencil to look like it had naturally fallen into place, I want to be able to simply drop them and move on. With the new settle button, you can easily do that. First, you'll need to place the object or objects you'd like to settle somewhere above the object or surface you'd like to drop them on. In this particular scene, I've placed them directly above my mug's opening so they fall directly into the mug and remain contained inside. And as you can see, once the button is pressed, the objects fall into place and continue to settle. When they reach a point where you're satisfied with how they've settled, or when they stop moving entirely, you can click anywhere in the real-time view to stop the settling process. And if we zoom in here, you can see that the pen and pencils have settled into the mug in a very natural manner. A little quick tip when working with the settle feature, you do not need to have the collision checkbox marked to use the settle button. However, the settle button will work with the collision checkbox marked. And if you do leave the checkbox marked when using settle, you'll need to uncheck it before making any further adjustments. Lastly, let's take a quick look at the as parts checkbox. By enabling as parts, you were essentially telling Keyshot to settle your object by its different component parts rather than as a whole. You can see here that when I press the settle button with the as parts checkbox toggled, 
each individual part falls and settles, creating a broken up or scattered effect between the object's individual components. This can be incredibly useful when simulating something breaking apart, or if you're trying to scatter many parts that have been imported into Keyshot as one. One thing to be aware of, whether you're using the As Parts checkbox or not, is that the settle function may take a while to complete. The amount of time is entirely dependent on the triangle count and will be noticeably longer when dealing with objects that are breaking into many parts. Overall, this is an incredibly useful feature for creating more natural placement of objects in your scenes, whether it's dropping items onto a desk, scattering coffee beans across a countertop, or creating unique stylized compositions Keyshot 10.1's collision detection will not only help you add a new level of realism, but will also help you do it with speed. Thanks for watching this Keyshot 10 tutorial. If you're interested in more useful Keyshot content, hit that subscribe button and get notified as soon as new videos hit the channel. Don't forget to let us know your thoughts on this tutorial in the comment section below. And if you found this video useful, give it a like and share with your friends.